if you're a heating air team technician or even a salesperson, what happens in negotiations and why does this matter? This is a super important question. I'm Scott Sullivan Bell, coming to you live for HVAC Technician Sales Secrets on a perfect day to talk about sales and a perfect day to talk about you, you closer. So here's the thing. I do have a video number one. I will put it in the link in the description down below. You should really check this out. Number two is all about the buyer's playbook, right? So I am a fan of human psychology. I'm a fan of how and why people do what they do. Now, I have sat through more presentations than I can count. Remember, at one point, I was a corporate sales trainer. And if you didn't know that, I was a corporate sales trainer. So my job was to ride with salespeople and was to role play uh, every single day for about 10 years. That's what I did. So I took really good notes. So I'm going to pass those on to you. So if you're in the position of you've rolled your presentation, you've rolled your price, the person seems like they're interested, and now they're in negotiation mode, which could be a little bit past the objection mode. They really want it. They want to. They want to change the price. They want to change the terms. They want to change um, how this is going to go down. The time frame, the quantity. Right. Those are like mean the four things that people are going to negotiate on: terms, price, time frame, or quantity. Are there more? Absolutely. But I'm going to give you the four most common that are in the industry. And so you need to know what you're going to do. So first, first, let's say that you are having a conversation. You've overcome objections. You're at a price of twenty grand. And they're they're going and they're using their version of word tracks. And I got a few of them in here that I'll I'll go over with you. You know, uh, you, you are going to have to lock down that you're the company they want, you're the salesperson they want, they're you're the equipment that they want. Okay, so one of the questions you could ask that could be your word track is money aside, would you do this with me? And if they answer no, you got to figure out what's going on. There's been times where I've said money aside, would you do this with me? And the person says no. And I'm like, okay, so help me understand very calm. Help me understand what am I doing here if we wouldn't do business? Well, I want to take your proposal and I want to make the other company negotiate down. Does it happen? Yep, it does. And so be aware that sometimes that motive is not to buy from you. So the second tie down for this is if I could do that, then what? Right? If I could, and I'm not saying I could, if I could get you that price, what happens next? If I could get you that price, then what do we do? If I could get you that price, what are we doing? Right, and whatever variations comfortable for you. Like I'm pretty much more of an aggressive person than a passive. I can be passive. Like let's say that you're fantastic and you like it. If we could do that, then what? And then with that lockdown is really going to tell you. It's probably going to come down to a possibly, maybe, or kind of. Well, we would we would possibly do business with you. Well, what would take us from possibly to definitely? Like you need to know that there are natural progressions that when you go through enough presentations that this is what's going to happen. So what I want to do is say, hey, you're watching this video. If you want to get some insider secrets, you should join HVAC Tech Secrets. I'll give you the goods, not in the Facebook group, not in the YouTube channel. What that means is extra training for you that's private coaching or discounted that nobody else is going to get a discount. So let's start with number one. There is a lot of different versions of this of you can do better than that. Or you've got to do better than that. Come on. It's taught in negotiation books, so you better be prepared for this one. you you got to do better than that. Which is kind of a version of you're going to have to sharpen your pencil. And I learned this, this saying from this dude, Tad. And Tad would be like, I'm not the pencil sharpener. I went on a sales call with him, and that's what he told the guy. The guy says, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil. And Tad had like this kind of grasp, rat, raspy voice. And he's like, ha ha, I'm not the pencil sharpener. So personal preference, that's how he did it. I'm not saying that's how you have to do it. Right, so when somebody does this to you, they're literally playing the hot potato game. They're like, hey, everything's now on you. You have to deal with this. So you're gonna have to figure out what your playbook says that you're gonna do. Are you gonna stand your ground? That's one play. Are you gonna say, if I could do that, then what? Or money aside, would we do be doing business? You're gonna use some sort of a lockdown technique. Or are you gonna say, here's what I can do? I mean, there's only so much that you can do when somebody throws like, you're going to have to do better than that at you. You could do nothing. You could get a discount. Or, you know, you could start asking a couple of questions. Start asking some probing questions. They threw the hot potato in your hand. It's perfectly perfectly within your realm to start asking some questions to probe to figure out what you can do. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. You're going to be pressured with time. They, the, the, the person, may pressure you with time. So pressuring you with time may get you to speed up. Pressure with time may be like... If you can't give me an answer, I'm going to walk out. They're going to they're going to try to control the clock. It happens, right? Okay. So, like, you're going to have to deal with that. Number two, they're going to just come back and say your price is too high. 
another version of the hot potato. They're throwing it in your hands. They're telling you your price is too high. They're leaving it on you. That you could have some more trucks. Hey, look, everything's more expensive. You ever built a house? You think it's going to cost five hundred thousand? It cost you five hundred sixty. Nothing ever comes in at budget. Whatever word track you want to use, you could always go compared to what? Now this is personality based. You can be like Scott. I would never say that. Or Scott, that's not aggressive enough. Or Scott, that's too passive for me. Fine. Build your playbook. I, I'm not saying you have to do it my way. I'm just saying it's a possibility. And so when you're taking a look at it. You can even ask him, what were you thinking? I mean, I've given you like a, a whole spectrum of like what, what could be done from passive to somewhat aggressive. Number three, the only way you're going to get this deal is, and they have a preset number in their head. You have a $20,000 unit. The only way you're going to get this deal is if we do it for 15. My question is, how did you get to that math? I mean, how, talk this through. Like if I could take 25% off of my price immediately, like my price isn't real. I would literally say that. If I could go down 25%, if I could take five grand off of a $20,000 price, my price isn't real. I don't know where you're coming up with this math. You know, where, where did this expectation come from? Well, that's what I was thinking. Well, that's what my neighbor got a system for. Oh, your neighbor got a system, right? Are they the one talking to companies? Do you go shopping with them when they go to the supermarket or the grocery store and buy the same thing that they did? Do you still have the wants and needs? I mean, we've got an electronic air cleaner in this thing. We've got to add more duct work. We've got to put in a filter base. Like there's things that you can do and everybody mysteriously at the end of a price has a friend that did it way better. Now, here's the thing that you need to know too is friends kind of distort the truth when they tell that they bought something, okay? I had a friend that bought a $50,000 car and paid $50,000 for it. But when he told me the story that he bought the car, he paid 40. Well, on the paperwork on the counter was a bill for 50 grand. So sometimes people, when they relay, retort, explain a story, what they do is they uh, they overstate their negotiation capabilities because they don't want their neighbor to say, I could have done it better. I could have done it better. Now, I will tell you this, there is a neighborhood in Sacramento and I hated, very much hated going to it because it's a retirement community and there was a bunch of old people and they would compete for how cheap they could get things done. So you would go into the neighborhood and like you would be in the middle of a presentation and someone would come and knock on the door. Hey, you're getting heat in there. I had XYZ company come out and do, you know, a four ton split system with zoning for $18,000. Come see me when you're done. Like no shame in their game. Like there, there are neighborhoods like that. Like I, I would much rather crawl through broken glass than deal with that neighborhood. Okay. So know that people are going to have a playbook and you got to have your own. Be aware that people are taught this. Now, I, I have read tons of negotiation books, tons of sales books. And every once in a while, somebody will mention things in one of these books. And I'm like, I, you know, I remember running into that. And then you run into it and you're like, now I know why I had to prepare. And this is why it's eight minutes into the video. And it's a good thing that you're here. So uh, one strategy that some people use is they throw a full-on adult temper tantrum right? Are you freaking kidding me? There's no way in the world that I'm going to pay that much money for a system, right? They, they literally have a nuclear meltdown and you're like, what in the world is, you are a grown person and you're acting like a three-year-old. Well, it's done on purpose because they've done it before. This is, this is scripted. Believe it or not, this is scripted. In the back of your head, you go through this, you should laugh and be like, Scott told me, Scott told me this was going to happen. And when it does, you're going to be like, yep, it happened. I saw it. Kind of tangent of this is to be angry. I'm so mad how ridiculous this price is. Mm -hmm. I'm so mad and so angry that you think that it should be less, right? At the end of the day, it's not going to be. It It is what it is. Or they could be pushy. And uh, pushy could be, once again, time. Pushy could be cherry picking. Oh, you need to know about cherry picking. Cherry picking is this, okay? Let's say that you have a base system and it's 20 grand and you need to add a plenum and it's 500 and you need to add a return and it's 1500. So we got 20 grand, 500 and 1500. What cherry picking is, is uh, a, a potential client will go get three bids and they'll find a system for 15 grand from one guy and then they'll find a plenum for 325 from another and then they'll find a return for $900. And what they'll do is they're like, all right, well, here's what I want you to do is I want you to match this guy's price here on this item. I want you to match this guy's price here on this item. And I want you to match this guy's price here on this item. And like, you need to be aware that there's people that are professional shoppers, that that's what they do. 
And you know, your answer should actually be, I wish I could. That's not how this works, right? Like, I wish I could, not how this works. Uh, I mean, we're gonna have to figure something out, but I can't. It's it's uh, this isn't this isn't the way that we go down this path, right? And and for you to go down and want to have the conversation this way, it concerns me of what type of client that you're gonna be in the future, right? You're gonna be you're gonna have all these demands, and you're gonna want all these things met. And I've discounted everything to get you to there to be there. I've reduced all of my value. I don't have anything to come back and fix under warranty. I don't have anything to come back. So I wish I could. And in fact, I won't, right? I very rarely do I ever tell somebody no, but when somebody cherry picks, I'm like, like I, I, in the back of my brain, nuclear explosion, I'm like, uh, you know, nope, it doesn't work that way. Number five, be willing to slow down. So part of the playbook for a lot of people is to be pushy. And so you need to know that this is a negotiation strategy too. You give a presentation to Bob and Mary, you're about to roll numbers and they go, hey, we're kind of busy. Can't you just email me this? Like you haven't rolled numbers. Like they don't they don't know what's included. Can't you just email me this? And in the back of your mind, you should say like, hey, I wish it worked that way. Like you're telling yourself, I wish it worked that way. I wish I could do that. Um, you know, my company spent a bunch of time, energy, and effort to get me out here. We only got a few more minutes. Like, you need to have a few more minute word track. Like, we only have a few more minutes to go. And at least say, hey, I've got to explain what's included. At least let me do that much. We we, we said it was going to take 60 to 90 minutes today. And we're at 55 minutes. I got five minutes. Give me five minutes. Right? Just give me five minutes more. Just, just give me five minutes more. Uh, so it's all about speed. Be aware that you're going to be pushed to be sped up at the end of a presentation. And then last of this, bonus number six. Like, you thought you were going to get five. Like, I opened this conversation, I'm like, five. Five. But in all reality, it's six. Okay. <laughs> six. Bonus. Um, I sat through tons of sales presentations. I have been through tons of sales presentations myself. And know that most consumer transactions and a lot of interactions have three volleys. I give a price, customer has a request, demand, comment, concern. I give another price, product, service, they give a demand. I reply, they reply. That's three volleys back and forth. And at some point, you're going to get to the bottom. At some point, you've got nothing else to give. So like a couple of word tracks for you. I've given you everything I've got. I don't have anything else to give. And then ask for the sell. Let's get this done. Let's move forward. Or tell them. You've done very well. I, you really have. You've done better than any of your neighbors. You've done very well. Let's get this sewn up. Let's get this taken care of. To get started, I just need a driver's license. I need a down, pot, down <laughs> deposit down, whatever way that you're going to ask for it. But know that whatever word tracks that you use at the end, you should have figured out. What are you going to do when you get to the end? How do you go three volleys deep? How do you ask for the sale? Have them come back? You reply, they reply, you reply, they say yes. That's typically the breakdown of the three-part volley. There you go. A whole bunch on negotiation. You got one of two things to do from here. Just one of two. Find the subscribe button. Click on it every time I send out a video. You'll get an update or hit follow. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.